Hello and welcome to Disability Arts Online. My name is Michael Chun and today we're finding out about an arts organisation called Project at Works. So we're joined by Lisky Kak and Tom Raplora. Uh, so thanks for giving up your time to gain and speaking to us. You're welcome. Yep. So let's get, can I ask you first, um, what character have you have you came to the interview to get as? I've come as Listy Cat. She's an alternative female version of Lister from Red Dwarf. And and and, and, and I, I I take it you like milk, like any other cat. Yeah, I like a bit of milk. Yeah, yeah. No, I I do as well. Sometimes as well. Um, so, so yeah. So, t tell us about uh, the uh, project artworks and how you get supported by by going to the uh, network list. Well, I get supported because I I, have, I get a big uh, like a studio I can work in, and then I get to work with lots of different artists on bigger projects, and I can do it all. So, so Tom, o over the years, you, you've worked on a number of uh, different uh, pro uh, projects and backgrounds with mental health and uh, kind of like community seconds. So what has re really changed kind of like over the years for, for the art scene? Um, well, a lot of my kind of previous work, um, it wasn't so much, you know, linked with, with the art scene. Um, it's only, you know, since I've been uh, at Project Artworks that the, you know, the art has played, you know, a, a larger role. Um, so I've been, you know, I, I first met with, um, uh, I did a little bit of work in, I think it was 2009 when they came to Portsmouth, which is where I kind of moved down from. Um, and, you know, in that time, there's been, you know, some change, um, not enough. And, you know, I think, I think the last couple of years, I think we've seen, um, you know, a, an increase in that kind of engagement with, with the public. Well, that's what I've kind of seen from my point of view. Um, I don't know if that's linked to, maybe there's a bit more understanding about not being able to access things um, you know, we're all kind of feeling that kind of, um, um, you know, we, 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 we can't sort of, we can't do what we want all the time. And, um, and I think, you know, I think that's kind of sort of maybe tapped in a little bit to the psyche of everyone. And, and you know, and I think, you know, you know, people have kind of turned to, you know, other, um, you know, we've kind of sort of like, it's difficult really because we've, I'm just, I need to frame this correctly because, um, because it's, it's quite a complex kind of situation. And I think, I think for the most part, it's, there's small steps in, in making more connections with other communities. And, you know, in the time that I've been at Project Artworks, you know, we've, uh, we've made some, you know, I've, I've been part of some of the films. Um, we've gone to Liverpool and we were at Tate Liverpool. Um, and we, we made kind of sort of, there was more public interaction and working with local communities. And that has increased over the last few years. Um, so I'd say the last few years, I've seen the most steps towards um, progression um, in the in the previous years, so it's I think it's going in the right way, um, and we've got documents coming up. So it's, it's an even bigger scale, and of course we have the Turner Prize. So I think you know the more and more that goes into the public domain, you know the more kind of it's it's at the forefront of people's thinking. You mentioned about the Turner Prize, there, uh, Tom. I'm going to ask uh, Lasky about the. Your, your work has been displayed um, at the Turner Prize Exhibition uh, Gallery. How, how, does, how does that feel to see your work um, at a, a big kind of exhibition like that? Well, it's not, um, it's, I mean, it's everyone at Project Artworks 
work and it's it's just a big honour to have an actual um, an exhibition at the Turner Prize. It's such, um, such a big thing, and then we and then lots of people were interested in actually like the work and what project artworks do and stuff and then I got to meet a few of the different artists which I got on really well with and then I did some stuff with me characters as well. I suppose like um, when you see your, your work at the, the uh, kind of high profile kind of exhibition like that you you suddenly realise that um, you know you know, it doesn't matter what ability you, you have, um, disability or not, um, you know, disability is on that label, but would you agree that, you know, um, would you like to see more kind of like representation in the kind of like mainstream arts? Yeah, I'd love to see, um, like, and maybe like Project Artwork have a few more displays at different things to get more people of an interest of what they might be doing. Yeah, uh, and for you, Tom, would that be the same? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's about kind of everyone having, you know, the same chance, chances and um, having the same, you know, ability to access, um, you know, all of these things. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And, um, and it, but I think, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, that we're working towards and I think it's working. When you see, when you, when you say to people, uh, obviously that's questions for, for both of you, but when you say to people that you're working with, uh, a kind of like disability arts company, um, do, do you, what, what's people's views on that? Do, do they say that that's brilliant or do you, do you get people saying, well, um, are you able to do that and, uh, and all that as, as well? Um, well, my, my personal experience is, is it's been a bit mixed when we're at the Tate Liverpool, you know, some of the public are a little bit kind of maybe disarmed, um, you know, um, you know, you get, you know, some, you know, there were some funny comments, I think, from from people that, you know, that were a bit ignorant, I think. Um, some people are just very accepting, um, and I think it's a, a, a good world, you know, the art, you know, the art world for for that. Um, you know, um, there's a mixed response. Some people can be, you know, uh, a bit ignorant to it, maybe. Um, some people have been rude, <laughs> plainly rude, which you know, that's that's that was the very very few but most people are really accepting and really engaging and they want to know more so i think it's i think it's pretty positive i suppose that the same question um, would be could you look at about them how how does it feel that when people are but rude to your work and you know like what you have achieved kind of like over the years as well or do you just kind of like shuck it out basically? I I think it's a bit harsh when they're a bit rude because I've gone um, because we we're we're entitled to do what they do. We do, we're just slightly different, which is um and which and which is no and no biggie. And I've got a friend and he's got a good word for things like that. And he says there's no such thing as can't. So and that's so that's so true. So um I think people with disabilities should actually like and get the same sort of respect as normal people rather than being isolated and not liked by the odd few. I suppose that's right what you said there uh, about rude and about ignorant um, uh, and I, I've always said for years that disability is like a label and you know um, we should get to so take that label out of a quizzing like the arts um, sector as well but what um, you, you mentioned about the, the word ignorant there Tom, um, so what would you like to see that the arts going forward in terms of kind of like on the TV or magazines or, or radio or, you know, we'd like to see more people kind of out there in the public eye. And then, and when you get that in the public eye, that means that people um, will forget ab about that you've got a disability or a learning disability. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I'm not too sure on the you know what I would like to see, but what what I think it's more about behind the scenes. Um, 
uh, me and Lucy are, are involved in making a film at the moment. And, um, you know, what's kind of cropped up is communication and how, you know, how, how films are made and how, how just sort of like, you know, in a, in a neurotypical world, how we do things. And we need to really kind of change that structure um, in order for that accessibility to be easier. So we have been working on a film and let's just take something simple as, you know, information that comes through via an email. Now that could be quite anxiety provoking and it has been quite anxiety provoking, hasn't it? So it's all about kind of changing those structures on how, how we do things and rethinking how we make, make things. And um, I think if we could start doing that first of all, um, and then hopefully the work will then kind of come through after that. But it's, yeah, it's, we need to break down the structure of the neurotypical world and how we work and we need to introduce different ways of working and better ways of communicating. Now, I hope, I hope you're going to give us an exclusive for the Disability Arts Online here about your, your film, uh, your, your movie. Can you tell us a wee bit about that? You got nothing to say about that? Well, basically, it's a group of neurodiverse artists and we've all got together and we've contributed little bits of like ideas to this film and they're going to put it all together in a big documentary, um, like a, li a, little do a little documentary thing just to give people an idea of how actually like um, them like the neurotypical world like communicates and how as people with like disabilities see the world differently from normal people. Yeah, so the, 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 the film um, at the moment is called uh, Spiral and um, it's being done through uh, autism through cinema. And, um, you know, it's, it's, not been, it's not been the smoothest of, of journeys because we've had to do everything online. So that in, in itself, um, you know, produces problems that we might not have had. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we were supposed to be, I think, shooting the film back in November, and then it got moved again. And then lots of other kind of issues came up with funding and payments. And so once again, it's been put on hold, um, but hopefully we'll see it this year. So yeah, Autism Through Cinema. Is, is the place to check out. And the film at the moment is called The Spiral. And as Listy Cat just said, there's, there's eight different neurodiverse artists and um, you've contributed an amazing kind of, I think four scenes. In fact, one of the scenes, this is just the small version, is a character called... DJ Dragon. DJ Dragon, there's DJ Dragon. And DJ Dragon is, well, you want to explain DJ Dragon quickly? Basically, she's a girl called Georgie. She got a, a, a spell cast on her by a witch in a fantasy land and she guards a princess for a hundred years. And then she, and then when the princess finds her handsome prince and falls in love, she goes off and sets the dragon free and she comes to like the real world and she finds it hard to, adjust because uh, like and because of her like dragon side and her dragon side I mean she transforms into a dragon whenever she sees food. And 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 is this movie going to be shown in cinemas as well to like mainstream audiences because what I was saying earlier on was it's important for everyone to, to see it not only the kind of like disability community. Yeah, I, I, I really couldn't give you an answer on, on where it's being shown. I, I know it will be, it will be as public and as widespread as, as possible. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd need to uh, check some facts on that, on, on where. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was going to ask Leske, when you take uh, audiences about your um, kind of like at that gallery and show, show them your work and your when you're in Costco, um, when you're kind of grasp up, what is the kind of like reaction uh, from the audiences? Well, lots of people are very, are very kind and they seem to love it. And then when I, when I did a couple of my characters for the Turner Prize, lots of, lots of like artists and then other people, members of the public who came around were quite interested and they 
wanted to take a few photos of me characters and then just like talk to me about my characters, which was really nice. That, that was good, yeah. And and I, I suppose that's a positive thing to, to take, take out your, your tours. And I forgot to ask, do you like doing the tours as well, Risky? Yeah, I do enjoy doing the tours of me characters because when I have one of me costumes on, I can sort of in, enable, in, like, inhabit that character and behave how I wouldn't normally behave just because I'm in character. Now, the, the very important question is, what is your favourite cha character to uh, get dressed up with uh, to do the tours? That's a tricky one because I love all my characters, so I can't I can't really pick a favourite. But I think if I was forced, I quite like doing Cosmic and Collie because he's quite he's sort of the opposite from me. So I'm sort of good as gold and wouldn't do anything to like hurt um, and wouldn't do anything to be naughty. But Cosmic Collie is quite the opposite because he he's like very naughty and likes to get into trouble when he can. Well, yeah, I suppose that was, that was a difficult question to answer, but you you that you kind of like negotiate that one well, so so well, well done. Yeah, they're uh, all listening. All the others are listening in, so that's quite. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you, <laughs> yeah, you you would need to watch what you're saying because yeah. the 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 kind of behind you and all that kind of thing, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. The camera pans for a closer look at some of the outfits including larger-than-life dogs, a huge Sonic the Hedgehog, a cat, and other animals. Yep. So, Tom, how did you how would you tell people about like, the the blunt work that uh, you invested does at um, Project Arts to get more people involved? Um, well, I just you know I, th I think a lot of it's just through showing what what uh, what goes on, um, and I think you know I think that really speaks for itself. I think um, you know. A lot of people can talk a good talk, can't they? But um, mm. to to actually kind of, you know, to 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 dress up as a character and to show how um, Lucy likes to communicate and interact with the world, and you know, we all have our kind of masks that we put up, and um, you know, our different faces we have for different situations. And Lucy does it literally and has the freedom to to do that in comfort and a safe place. And I think as long as we can get that through, uh, whether it be in film or in person, like the gallery tours, then I, I think that's the, I think that's the, the best way, yeah. I was going to ask, ask as well, like how many years have you been involved in projects, uh, project apps? Well, I've been situated in these studios for six years. Uh, I did, I did, had a little bit of contact with uh, Project Artworks back in 2009, but it's been, yeah, the last, the last six years. Um, in fact, I moved from Portsmouth to Hastings to be involved. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's so important. Um, yeah. It's important the work that they do, and um, it's just brilliant working here. I was just going to ask the same question to Roscoe the Cat. Um, how many years have you been involved? And also, whereabouts did you hear about uh, Project Arts? Well, I don't know the exact time I got involved. It's quite a long time ago. But I remember coming to... Ha I, I was part of a programme which Project Artworks were doing, like, introducing people from who had just left college or school into arts and that. And... I, I'm one of the, the staff here, Esther, who um, who used to work at the town where I did some volunteer work. She used to run a group called Generate, and I, and she told me about Project Artworks, and I came over and had a look to see if I might how, um, if I might it might be something I was interested in, have a tour round, and then I met Tom, and he said he'd be interested in working with me. So basically, from there, that's how 
I started and then I've been with them for quite a, a long time now. How would you say to, to people that if they, if they want to get involved in project project arts but not really sure about it, how would you kind of like sell that to them to, to come and work with your organisation? I'd say, I'd say basically like um, um, look, I'm like look up um, maybe phone up and have a talk to one of the artists and see if it's something they'd be interested in um, like doing and then like what it involves and then like have maybe um, like if, the, if they've got some of the artists have got time and there's a day that's suitable for them in, enroll them in and see what they think of it. And Tom? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously, you know, there's, there's um, uh, to, to make direct contact, um, you know, there is, uh, we have a wonderful peer support group which is also really, really helpful and a big part of the work, you know, it's, it's working, you know, out and, you know, with, with people and families, um, you know, the difficulties that, that arise for them. And I think that's, I think the peer support is a fantastic side to Project Artworks. You know, the art that we make is, is, is one side to it. Um, but there's, you know, there's big issues, isn't there, around, you know, um, carers and, caring for people and what's accessible and how to access things and so you know just just have a look on the website and see what information there is and we're we're really open to communication in in many many different forms um so yeah just come and have a look and and take it from there i suppose one more question that i wanted to ask as well and Obviously, when, when I do interviews now, I can't really go a whole interview without asking about COVID and the, the challenges it's actually bringing to your organisation at the moment. So what um, what challenges has it faced? Because I know that you said, Tom, about um, everybody had to work remotely, whether it's on Zoom or other kind of like platforms, how difficult it is for of the girls left the cat well to to work from kind of like home during lockdown well what was your experience like well i found it a bit tough because i wasn't able to interact with people face to face so i could only do it via zoom and i and i like and i'm good at technology but i mean i like having the sort of like company and then the face to face contact so it's a bit tricky to do it online on zoom all the time and then i was limited to what i could do at home as so i have a smaller space at home to work than i do at project artworks yeah and and for for my experience we we didn't really skip a beat to be honest we um we set up an online Studio B, it was called, and we made work together still. So we would have our Zooms and um, we'd have little breakout groups. And I would sit with Charlie and you and Lucy, sorry, Listy Cat. Lucy was there at some point. And um, we would just work alongside. So we would keep our set times. Um, so there was no kind of break in that continuity. We had you know, gifts that were, or kind of packages that were made up that were, that were kind of uh, tailor-made for each person and we would send them out. So we would have kind of um, a postal discussions um, and me, uh, myself, Tim, uh, who works here, um, uh, he's a filmmaker as well, and a young man called Sharif, we made some little films which are um, accessible on YouTube, I think, at the moment, and they were called Out and About in Lockdown. And I, um, uh, I would pick Sharif up and we would, you know, film our time during lockdown and where we could access Out and About. And um, it'd be really good. So we'll, we'll send you the links for that. And uh, so please check out the little films. So we just made as many con uh, connections as possible and we kept the communication going. Um, it, it was difficult, it was different, but I think we managed really, really well. Yep. Okay, well, thanks for giving up your time today uh, to speak to us here on Disability Arts Online. No worries. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, it's been really nice. having us. Lovely talking Thank to you. Thank you. Yep.